Right, welcome back. Berkshire Hathaway. That's Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. Revealing 73% of its equity portfolio focused on just five names. Apple, Bank of America, Coca-Cola, Chevron, and American Express. Weiss, you got the first crack at this. Um, down 3% year to date relative to an S&P that's down a lot more than that. What do you make of these choices in a very concentrated portfolio in many different sectors? Tech, finance, consumer, staples, energy. Well, he's on record, and I agree with him, that diversity is the enemy of performance. So you want to, you want to do your work, as he does. He's got unique access to management, uh, and make your bets. And I'm not going to take issue with any of them. They're all quality names. You wouldn't bounce any names. of these? Sorry? You wouldn't bounce any of these? Would I bounce any of them? Uh, you have, you know, questions, I think you have Express, questions about any of them? Uh, American Express, I think, is less competitive with the other, with the others than with the other credit card companies. Uh, and has seen some moderation to their franchise. Uh, Chevron, no. I sold it too early. Uh, Coca-Cola, you're not going to get rich off Coke. It's just going to be a steady eddy, which is what he's looking for. So based upon what the way he looks at the world and the way he goes ahead, you've got to believe that Coca-Cola is going to take a major hit because he's been it for so long. So just the tax hit alone will will be, you know, very painful. Kerry, so, yeah. how, how's this portfolio look to you right in the here and now? I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it's had great, great results this year. Uh, I disagree with Steve. We own American Express, and I thought the quarter was very, very strong. And it wasn't just membership. They've, they're gaining lots of traction with young people. Um, in an environment where prices are going higher, they take their percent, so it's an inflation protection. People are traveling more, and yet you know, we're seeing that uh, across the spectrum of uh, different income brackets, but they are more protected because they're with affluent consumers. So, you know, we think as a bank, basically, they get their um, interest rate uh, movement as as rates go higher. So, th 13 and a half times next year's earnings, we think it's a great stock. And as you know, Steve pointed out, he's got a solid track record with these these companies, and you know, no reason that it shouldn't keep outperforming. So, Joe, right, Chevron, I mean, we look, we mentioned the performance. I think this exercise is to pick through these stocks and say, well, Chevron is up 58% year to date. Anybody would take that. Well, Exxon is up 80, like 85 year to date. So Exxon or Chevron? Well, but, but that's catch up because in the, in the prior years, Chevron actually outperformed Exxon Mobil. So a little bit of catch up. Um, I, think he's, I think he's in the right place overall. I somewhat disagree for the viewer with what Steve is saying. And uh, Warren Buffett and Berkshire, they're institutional investors, so they can concentrate. Let's remember they own a lot of private businesses. That's the diversification element that's added to the portfolio. And a lot of cash, too. Exactly. So for, and they could be acquirers in this environment. So for the viewer at home that doesn't have that advantage, they need the diversification. I also think that the holdings he has are more representative of what the holdings are going to be as we move forward, where you'll see the rewards. And I think it's traditional. There's no extreme valuations in any of these names. Uh, you, you don't see emerging software. You don't see the hope and dream stocks. And I think that's exactly the type of holding that the viewer wants to have going forward. These are all quality names, and we've emphasized owning quality. But you can't, he can't own those. What's he going to do, buy the entire company of an emerging software company? He needs liquidity. He needs to get a big position. Well, doesn't he have a position in Snowflake? That uh, came, yeah, but that came out of the private. No, I understand that. Yeah. But, I mean, I think to our knowledge, he still owns I that think he stake, sold some down. Doesn't he? So, I mean, he has some exposure to... Right. But in the private market, he can get a big position of that. He's not going to go in and buy a small, smaller company and just bid it up. Victoria? How about these names? Would you trade? I mean, any I like being out? boring. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I think it's funny. Yeah, I would bring up Oxy. He obviously that one's been the number one stock basically this year, and he's made a killing on that. I know it's not necessarily a top five holding, but he's done quite well on his energy names. Yeah, Exxon over Chevron this year. Uh, Chevron's still a very quality company, and and we like being boring right now. He has good diversification. I think he's willing to be patient. I think as you talk about Buffett, you need to realize he's he has a different time horizon than the average investor, and people always want to be like Warren, but then they end up selling when it goes down and buying when it 
it goes up. And so I think if you want to emulate him, it's don't panic and see opportunities in bear markets. And I would also argue he definitely made a lot of money on Coca-Cola. I can't remember the exact statistic, but it's something like billions upon billions of just dividends that he's received over the years. So if you're willing to be boring and patient, you can buy quality companies. You look to buy and not sell when things get hard. You can do a little bit better. So uh, I generally think across the board, not not bad picks. You know, we might like a, a Goldman over a Bank of America or a JP Morgan. Um, we like American Express. We like Chevron. We like energy. We think Oxy's been a great play for him. Um, and I think it'll be interesting to see what he looks to pick up uh, because he tends to love it when the market goes down. And that's the attitude I think investors should really look at, at is how do I make money in a bear market? You got to ignore the price volatility maybe on your current holdings. If they're quality blue chip holdings that aren't going to blow up on you, he doesn't care about the price action at those. He's looking at ways to get wealthy in the long term. Let's look to buy discounts that have quality attributes to them. Okay. But to your point, American Express has underperformed both Visa and Mastart meaningfully over the last year, five years, and 10 years.